Folks, today we're going to talk about beef. We're going to talk about cattle. We're going to talk about farming. And we're going to talk about the fact that if an animal needs antibiotics to survive and thrive, then its living conditions are absolutely unlivable and we shouldn't eat it. Welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. If this is your first time or your 50 millionth time here, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back here. We are on a first generation farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. And these are my cattle. These are my beef cows. These are black Angus beef cattle. They're out here eating grass. That's what cows are designed to do. They are herbivores. They are not grainivores. Now, the argument can be said that corn is not a grain, it is a grass. Well, the kernel of the corn is a grain. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about GMOs for a minute too. Let's talk about genetically modified organisms, not selective breeding, which has made these cows what they are, the tough, hardy cow that lives on grass, that thrives on grass, that doesn't need medication. We're gonna talk about feedlot beef. We're gonna talk about cows, the beef that you're eating from the grocery store that's been waiting ankle deep or belly deep in its own feces and why it has to be medicated in order to stay healthy for you to consume. It's not right. It is absolutely not right. And before we even get started here, I know this is going to irritate some people that are in the beef industry or in the feedlot business. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care if you're irritated by this. You should be irritated. And if it sparks something in you that makes you angry, then it means you're probably not doing something the right way. And if you think it's normal to medicate in order to keep these animals healthy, you're dead wrong. You're dead wrong. These animals do not need to be medicated in order to stay healthy. They need a healthy environment to survive. So again, folks, we're on a 150 acre first generation farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. I lived downtown seven years ago, okay? So seven years ago, I lived in the city, in a downtown urban environment. I did not like what was going on with my food. I did not like the fact that I hadn't seen a honeybee in years, and I did not like the fact that the garbage I was buying in the grocery store was all GMO nasty stuff. So we raise our own food here on the farm, and we raise beef for others. That's what we do here on the farm. There are no medications given to any animals that aren't sick on this farm. There are no sick animals on this farm. There's no dewormer given to these animals. We use charcoal to worm our cattle. These cows never have to graze next to their own manure. Amazingly enough, they never get a drop of grain. Most of these cows out here have never had the taste of grain ever in their lives. It's unbelievable and we can make good, high-quality food, high-quality, nutrient-dense beef without having the environmental impact and without having to feed them antibiotics in their food so that they will grow and be healthy. Something is inherently wrong with a food system that advocates for feeding animals antibiotics in order to keep them healthy. If you have your animals in a healthy environment, such as this grass field right here, then you don't have to worm them. Then you don't have to give them antibiotics. Then you don't have to give them steroid implants. So first of all, Let's start really quickly with steroids. We're gonna talk about that real quick. Typically, you would band a calf. So if a male calf was born, which would be a little baby bull, you would put a band around its testicles when it's a baby and the testicles are about that big. The band goes around, cuts off blood circulation to the testicle and they simply drop off. That is the industry standard for castrating a young bull. Now. The industry standard for feedlot beef is to castrate that young bull and to put an implant in its ear. There's a little rod that has steroids that you put in its ear. In other words, we're taking away the very thing that produces the testosterone in a bull calf and then we're putting it back as an artificial hormone in the bull calf. We don't do that here on the farm. We wait until our cows are a little bit older. Our young bulls are just prior to breeding age, and that's when we band our young bulls. We band them after they've utilized the testosterone and growth hormone to grow the animal naturally, and we don't have to use an unnatural source of testosterone to make our animals grow. Does this make sense? I think it does. Now. 
let's talk about, and we'll get to the GMOs and we'll get to grain and we'll get to talking about this for sure. These cows are ruminant animals. It means they have multiple chambers in their stomach and they're basically digesting food parts which is undigestible to us so this grass is absolutely undigestible to the human species but it's absolutely digestible to the bacteria that's in this ruminant animal's stomach so these are big fermentation tanks now if you drink beer you know about fermentation if you drink wine you know about fermentation if you have apple cider vinegar you know about fermentation but nobody's talking about the methane that's produced from anything other than cows as an environmental impact now these cows burp. That burp and the gas that the cows pass contains methane. Matter can neither be created or destroyed here in this planet that we live in. So if matter can neither be created or destroyed, all we're doing is moving around various atoms and making methane. Methane, which is already here. Matter doesn't get created or destroyed. So it's already here, guys. I don't understand how these cows can have that much of an environmental impact. I do know what comes out of the backside of these cows. And by the way, no fertilizer on this land for the last six years. No fertilizer, no glyphosate, no sprays, no dewormers, no medications. We treat the sick, we don't treat the well. We treat the land with the butt fertilizer that comes out of these cows. So what I need to express to you is if you're eating food from the grocery store simply because it tastes good, then why not just go eat anything? If you want high quality protein, if you want unadulterated protein, then buy your beef from a local cattle operator similar to me that doesn't over medicate their animals. So let's go into the detail of feedlot beef. The average cow calf operation is, and that's what we started out doing. We had cows, those cows would have calves, at about seven to eight months old, we would take those calves to the market. The market would buy the calves and then take them to feedlots and they would feed those animals up until they got real big and fat and then take them to process. In that process of feeding them until they get real big and fat, they give the steroid injection in the ear. Okay, so they'll castrate and put the steroid um, rod in the ear. They will also feed these cows antibiotics in their food to help stimulate growth. Not only does it help prevent disease, but it helps to stimulate growth in the beef cow and it makes a super mega cow. Now we're feeding grain. These cows were not designed to digest grain. They're herbivores, not grainivores. They're not designed by nature to digest grain. So we upset the rumen in the stomach of the animal. We feed the animal what it's not genetically designed to eat and therefore we have to pump it full of steroids and antibiotics and GMO grain. Now the GMO grain could be corn, could be wheat, could be anything and everything out there that's genetically modified. Now in case you guys don't know what genetically modified means, in an organism genetically modified means this organism was put together in a lab. Not through selective breeding over tens of thousands of years, which is about how long animals and plants have been domesticated for human consumption. We're going in and we're pulling DNA from this animal which would never breed with this other animal or plant which would never breed together in nature. They would never cross paths in nature and we're pulling various pieces of DNA and we're splicing those in. Why are we doing that? Well for some good reasons to help promote more vitamins in food for some bad reasons so we can spray them and make it easier. So we're spraying the corn that these animals would be fed on a feedlot with glyphosate. So let's review here. So the food that you're buying in the grocery store, the beef that you're buying in the grocery store is not beef like this unless it's non-GMO grain fed certified organic beef. That is my spiel. Buy non-GMO certified organic grass fed beef for the nutrient content in that beef. If you're buying for flavor, then you can just eat anything. You could put salt on cardboard, I guess, and eat it and call it food. To me, 
the value in buying your groceries is spending the amount of money you need to spend to get the amount of nutrition that you need to get out of your food. There are higher levels of vitamins in grass-fed beef. There's higher levels of vitamin D for sure because these cows are out here in the daylight. So you're buying beef in the grocery store. That beef was most likely raised on a feedlot. That beef was given GMO food, that cow, was restricted to a small area so that it got big and fat quick. That cow most likely got antibiotics in its food. That cow most likely, or steer most likely, has had hormones added to its food or placed in its ear or somewhere under the skin of that animal to help it to grow. Do you want steroid super beef or do you want real natural grass-fed beef? That's a decision that you have to make as a consumer and you vote every single day with your dollar. So in review guys, we're out here and I am irritated with the food system in this country. I'm irritated with the fact that you can do virtually whatever you want to do to these animals and call it food and call it beef. Now, if you like corn fed beef, that's fine. You wanna corn feed your cow, that's fine. That's a very, very common practice. But the corn that we're getting nowadays is not the corn, the corn and grain that we're getting nowadays is not the corn and grain that your great grandpa and great grandpa fed their cows. The corn and grain that we're getting nowadays is adulterated. It is genetically modified in a lab from genes that come from this animal that would never ever breed with this plant. We splice them together so that we can make it easier to grow that crop and spray that crop with something like glyphosate. So glyphosate is a weed killer, okay? Glyphosate's a weed killer. There is Roundup Ready corn out there that can be sprayed with a weed killer and not die because the genetic makeup of that corn has been changed okay does that seem right i want you guys to post comments down there does that seem right does it seem right to have to medicate your animals in order for them to survive because the living conditions of those animals are so absolutely poor that they would not thrive, they would die if we didn't give them antibiotics in their food and medications in their food. In other words, your food is being pre-medicated. Now, I'm also a registered nurse. I have seen super infections. I have worked in intensive care units, medical intensive care units. I have seen some really nasty super infections. If you guys think for one minute that the explosion of allergic reactions and allergies in this country is due to something other than your food not being raised near where you are, then you're absolutely dead wrong. You have to eat the food that <laughs> is raised in the area that you live. In other words, these cows are out here eating grass that grows here in North Carolina. I walk out into the air here in North Carolina my allergies are affected by where I live and what I eat. You've often heard that local honey will help your allergies. Local beef can do the same thing. So my question to you guys, is it right? Is it right to raise our food in confined spaces feed them antibiotics, give them steroids, treat the well, or put them in living conditions that are so poor that we have to medicate them in order for them to survive. And then put that on your plate and call it food and tell me, I don't like grass-fed beef. That just doesn't taste as good. It's not true, good, unadulterated food guys, high quality protein, high quality food. Now, if you're vegan and you don't eat meat, whatever you wanna do is just fine with me. But if you think for one minute that no animals were harmed in the making of your veggie burger, you're absolutely wrong guys. Make sure you're looking for non-GMO grass-fed beef. When you're looking at poultry to buy, try and buy poultry local if you possibly can. In other words, try to buy your chicken local. Try to seek out local farms. You're gonna pay a little bit more for a smaller operation. There's no comparison to these cows and the beef that comes off this farm and the beef that's 
on the shelf in your Walmart. There is no comparison, guys. And I have folks around that are local that don't see the difference. They have no idea what's going into their food. Which one would you rather have? Would you rather have non-GMO or GMO food? Would you rather have food that was sprayed with glyphosate or some other weed killer or not? You tell me, or does it matter to you? If it doesn't matter to you, then you really seriously need to consider your own health. You get one body, you get one mind, and you are made up of what you eat. Whether you like it or not, you are what you eat. These animals do not receive antibiotics. These animals do not receive vaccinations. These animals move twice a day on fresh grass and they never have to graze next to their own feces. Therefore, they don't have worms, they don't have parasites, they don't have problems. The problems that come with overcrowding any species. You take people and crowd them into a really tight spot <laughs> and they'll all be sick too, guys. So do you want to eat sick beef or do you want to eat real beef right off a farm? It's up to you to decide. I am disgusted by the food system in this country which is advocating for steroid use, which is advocating for treating the well, not treating the sick. And if you have to give an animal an antibiotic in order for it to survive healthily in a confined area, then you're doing something wrong. There's something wrong with the food system in this country. Guys, post a comment down there. Tell me what you think about this. Uh, I know this is a bit of a rant and a bit of a ramble, but this is the entire reason that I got into farming, regenerative farming. No fertilizers, no sprays, no antibiotics, no steroids, cows, grass, healthy animals, moving, mobbing, and mowing out here on the property. Guys, Thanks a lot for joining me here today. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about food and help you to understand that the beef you're buying in the grocery store or at your local Walmart or wherever, I don't wanna pick on Walmart, but the beef you buy off the shelf is not the beef that you see right here, but they wanna portray it as farm fresh beef. This is farm fresh beef. Feedlot beef is feedlot beef. And there needs to be a discernible difference on the label. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me. Hit that like button. I'd love to have you back here on the farm. Watch another video. There's a whole bunch of food rants going on. I did a little bit of a rant about veggie burgers the other day. I just don't understand it. I don't understand how people can't see the difference in real food raised out here without medications. We don't need a pill for everything. Sometimes we can provide a healthy environment to live and healthy food to live, and we'll live longer and we'll live a better life, just like these animals. They live a great life with one bad moment, and we should all be that blessed. Come on down to the Stony Ridge, bring your wife and bring your kids, we're living life pure and sweet, that's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Say goodbye, girls. Woo! <laughs> See you guys. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.